Hello, dear participants. As an interpreter, I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Alex Sorokin, PhD and Executive Director of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia. I welcome you to another webinar dedicated to the issues of matching of constitution types in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. Today's lecture is dedicated to the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome according to traditional Chinese medicine or kapha vikriti, or pathological state of kapha according to Ayurveda. We will talk about issues of excessive weight, which is one of the serious threats for this constitution type, different variations of diet beneficial and contraindicated in obesity, low T3 syndrome, and also we will talk about cholesterol and try to find out why cholesterol produced by the liver is much more dangerous than cholesterol obtained from food. Here you can see Chinese hieroglyph denoting the syndrome of accumulation of dampness and phlegm and also kapha denoted in Sanskrit. Traditionally we go through some basic notions. Constitution is a complex of stable structural, anatomic, physiological, adaptive and psychological features of the body which had been formed under the influence of the innate and acquired factors. Why is it important to know the constitution type of the patient? Each type of constitution has its own weak points. Peculiarities of the constitution type form a tendency to certain pathogenic processes and diseases. Correction of the constitution features allows to prevent development of the disease. Knowing predispositions to diseases, the specialist can perform a preventive treatment, which is the highest level of art of healing. Traditionally, we have three basic constitution types. They are Vata, Pitta and Kapha. But also, doshas can be combined with each other in different ways. Vata, Pitta and Kapha form nine subtypes, and the tenth type is an ideal combination or balance of doshas. The key information is contained in the parity or matching chart that shows how traditional Chinese medicine symptoms or syndromes correlate with Ayurveda. Today we are discussing the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome that matches Kapha, Avalambaka constitution type in Ayurveda. What is the syndrome of accumulation of dampness and phlegm or Kapha Vikriti? It is a complex constitutional feature is developing due to stagnation in the, of the body fluids. We can understand stagnation of body fluids literally as swellings, accumulation of water, but it is important to know that it is also directly connected with accumulation of fat tissue. Maybe you haven't linked these two things before. So one of the things you need to know that there is a specific connection between accumulation of water and violation of fat metabolism. Also stagnation of body fluids initially connected with stagnation of key energy in most of the cases. It is the very reason of the development of the syndrome. That is why the first that first of all, of all you need to get knowledge about constitution type characterized by stagnation of key energy and it would be the platform for treatment. So accumulation of damp dampness and phlegm is a complex constitutional feature is developing due to stagnation of the body fluids followed by thickening of fluids in the intercellular matrix and condensation uh, of phlegm. As a result we get, we get pathological dampness and pathological phlegm which is directly connected with the excessive body weight and violation of fat metabolism. Let's start with a clinical case or a clinical example. When the patient with accumulation of dampness and phlegm comes to your office, the scale would show that the person is of 120 kilos, kilos of weight in a height of 175 centimeters. So the first thing that you would notice uh, that such a patient has an excessive body weight. The person would complain that he leads a sedentary lifestyle and barely gets up from a chair or a couch most of the time. He sits at work, he usually gets everywhere by car, so he doesn't walk a lot and in the end of the day he gets so tired he wants to sit in front of the TV without any movement. That is why for the past 10 years his belly has been growing bigger and bigger and his neck has been getting thicker and thicker. 
The skin of the patient would look, would look oily, glittering, as well as his hair. He would also complain that he is suffering from excessive sweating, though his sweat doesn't have a bad smell. It is predominantly watery and clear in comparison to the smell of sweat associated with pita imbalance. As for digestion, the person would complain that he usually feels heaviness in the stomach no matter what he eats. The only thing that helps him to fight heaviness is sienna tea, and as you know, sienna has quite a strong laxative effect. The person also feels tired throughout the day. In the morning he wakes up feeling exhausted and having bags under the eyes. Few things you need to pay utter attention to. First, the signs of early aging. The person is only 39 years old and when you look at him you see he is this mismatch of, the, of his age and his appearance as he looks much older. He may have gray hair and not just a couple of gray hairs but the substantial grayness of head and even chest hair. You would also find a couple of yellowish papules in his skin. So you need to mark that you found xanthomas on the skin of the patient. The next thing you look at is eyelids of the patient. You would find yellowish spots in the area around eyes or xanthelasmas. Another important sign is a vertical or horizontal folding on his earlobe and excessive hair growth in his ears. Now pay attention to the pictures on the slide. Two persons of two deep different types of obesity, a pear and an apple type of obesity. A pear type is the when fat gets accumulated on the bottom side, on thighs and buttocks, and the apple type of obesity is when fat depo deposits at the abdominal area of the body. And the second type, the abdominal type of obesity, is more dangerous as it causes heart problems and, and other cardiovascular problems. Here you can see two hieroglyphs. One of them is dampness, she, another is phlegm, tian. Accumulation of dampness is primary. It means that it starts accumulating before the phlegm. It starts with swelling on a cellular, cellular level. And only after this intercellular stage, it starts accumulating in the extracellular space. Once dampness has accumulated, there starts a condensation of phlegm. The phlegm appears in the form of mucus. In empty spaces, for example in bronchial pulmon pulmonary system, and mucus itself is associated with this constitution type. What other signs of the constitution type we may find in a person? The main features are excessive body mass, the additional features may be fatigue, uncontrolled desire for sweet food, and one of the interesting facts would be that the person doesn't consume much water, and the reason would be the excess of water in the body. Such a patient is not good in handling wet weather, and the general state of health is getting worse at the time of wet seasons. If the person is over 40, there is a chance that he has glucose intolerance developed in the body, which manifests through slight increase of blood sugar or second type diabetes. Such a person is usually kind, friendly and maybe even a bit shy. shy. His tongue is big and he also has teeth prints on the rims of the tongue. The tongue may be clear or have a slight whitish coating depending on the strength of manifestation of the syndrome. Pulse diagnosis would show a slippery type of pulse or hua pulse according to traditional Chinese medicine. The type of pulse according to Ayurveda we will discuss later. The syndrome is manifesting first of all due to the excess of water element in comparison to soil. The soil element may be in a state of norm or even slightly decreased. Subtab, subtab Pancha Mahaputta of Nidana Tep would show that Jala Mahabhuta has a tendency to increase with soil element in norm and other elements subdominating. Usually Vayu would be noticeably lowered in people of this type. When we talk about 
Mahaphutas, most of the people associate Jala or element of water with actual water. It is quite fair, but only for extreme imbalances. On a physical level, this element represents a certain principle of chemical binding between molecules. In other words, it is a certain strength of physiochemical connection between atoms and molecules. This specific strength of connection provides the substance the ability to flow. Due to this ability, such substances were associated with water. Going above the norm, Jala provokes imbalance of Kapha dosha and the development of the syndrome, which is usually connected with bronchial pulmonary diseases, followed by accumulation and output of mucus, and accompanied by features such as swelling, swelling of the tissues and lymphostasis, which sw with swelling of the lymphatic glands. Kapha dosha is formed of five subdoshas. The main subdosha is Avalambaka Kapha, which represents body fluids. First of all, interstitial and tissue fluids, which are getting filled with the products of hydrolysis of food nutrients. The mixture of such products of hydrolysis presents itself in uh, a nutritive substance. And you know that Kapha is responsible for the total nourishment of the body. It was already mentioned in the previous lectures that the seat of Avalambaka are lungs and heart. And the functioning of Avalambaka Kapha is connected with renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And in terms of this syndrome, it happens too. It is also connected with the system, but only from another perspective. As we have already discussed, the system, uh, we won't talk about it in details. So, what are the factors leading to development of the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome? Traditional Chinese medicine puts weak health of parents on the first place in the rating of the causative factors. There is really a very strong genetic determination of the development of the syndrome. Ayurveda has more philosophical point of view in terms of forming of any constitution saying that certain constitution is given to a person as a platform to express his capacities and talents, which means that you should not focus on your weak points or shortcomings, but to use your strong points. Sometimes in case of pure Kapha type, living in a cold, humid climate would inevitably lead to development of the syndrome, because the climate only aggravates the imbalances of the constitution and there are no efficient adaptive mechanism in this type of the body to fight such macro and micro environmental challenges. Another dangerous factor is hypodynamia, which is a big problem these days as insufficient physical activity and relaxed lifestyle are quite widespread nowadays. Also, irrational diet can be one of the reasons of the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome. Here we are trying to link accumulation of water and mucus in, with fatty food. Today we will try to understand why fat causes accumulation of water in the body and accumulation of dampness. Besides of cold, sweet and glutinous food, also uh, turn out to be a threat for this constitution type. But even before the accumulation of dampness or water in the body, there goes stagnation of key energy. It, that is why in uh, treating Kapha Vikriti we would also tonify ki or stimulate flowing of prana, speaking in terms of Ayurveda, or stimulate the flow of lymph as per modern medicine. Also, prolonged illnesses may also cause the emaciation of energy, which causes stagnation and accumulation of dampness and phlegm. And the last possible causative factor is violation of the functioning of organs participating in water-salt metabolism, such as kidneys, spleen, pancreas in particular, and lungs. 
Do not be surprised by the presence of spleen in this list. The channel of spleen is usually taking, taken as one of the channels uh, with pancreas, and pancreas participates in water salt metabolism through regulation of fat metabolism. What disorders do we get as a result of accumulation of dampness and phlegm? First of all, in general, we may say that Pasto's body complexion is typical for people suffering from this syndrome. This creates predisposition to frequent catheteral diseases in the childhood, various disorders of bronchial pulmonary system, and so on. Another two serious disorders are an excessive body mass starting from childhood due to the peculiarities of nutrition as well as formation of fat tissue. And the last but not the least serious threat that occurs after the age of 40 is hyperlipidemia, which is able to even shorten a lifespan of a person. Hyperlipidemia meant accumulation of fat or cholesterol in the blood. Let's go back to the discussion of the spleen. According to traditional Chinese medicine, spleen controls the blood, participates in the process of blood creation. It raises all clear, which means that in the process of digestion, in the small in intestine, due to the functioning of pancreas, the food substance get divided into clear and turbid components. Turbid components are to be expelled from the body, and the clear ones are used by the body. Also, pancreas is responsible for their transportation and transformation, and this role is closely connected with pathogenesis of the nature of the person. Pancreas withdraws key from food in, and turns it into nourishing key. Pancreas is involved in the process of splitting lipids, which later feeds the entire body except the brain, which prefers carbohydrates. Also, the pancreas withdraw water from the stomach, turning it into various body fluids, participates in moistening the body, though pancreas is not watery in its nature, and when the pathological dampness accumulates in the spleen and causes stagnation and violation of the endocrine fun function of pancreas, it leads to overwatering of all the body and retention of fats. In such cases we get, first of all, digestion disorder through violation of the enzymatic function of pancreas, and then we get pathological dampness, excessive cholesterol, or phlegm that is stored in the fat tissue. So why do we associate fat metabolism with water? We can understand it with the help of the simple example of a camel. We all know that a camel doesn't have to drink often as it has two humps with a fat which provides endogenic water that nourishes all the body. That is why we directly connect, connect accumulation of fat and water in the body with fat, uh, with fat. How does the pancreas carry out transportation and transformation functioning in the body? Fats that come with the food undergo the process of initial hydrolysis already in the mouth by lipase enzyme contained in saliva. The main part of hydrolysis though is possible due to pancreatic li lipase. Though functioning of pancreatic lipase is possible only with the presence of bile acids, mechanisms of hydrolysis of fats in the gastrointestinal tract. Emulsified drops of fat are not water-soluble. It means that it needs to be dissolved first to undergo fermentation. This dissolution of fats that is the very function that is carried out by salts of bile acids. The salts get inside the fat drop and change the surfacial tension of the membrane under the influence of lipase. And under the influence of this lipase, the neutral fats or triglycerides get split into fatty acids. The micelles move to the mucosal wall of the intestine and now my cells are able to get into the blood and nourish the body as a part of key 
as an energy mechanism. When my cell gets into intestinal cells, fatty acids turn into neutral fats again, get packed and sent into lymph. Then it gets into a portal veins and in the end gets distributed throughout the body. The cells that carry triglycerides give them to heart and skeletal muscles as a nourishing component. The portion of fat which is left is given to adipocytes or fat cells that store fat and give it an, uh, in case of need, approximately in the amount 2 to 9 grams per hour. The release of fat from the fat depots happens in case of energy need. Fat gets into the blood again and goes to organs which need energy. The rest of lipid elements go to liver, which plays an important role in fat metabolism. That is why in case of excessive weight it is important not only to stimulate the flow of qi but also to cherish liver. Thus we have briefly overviewed the process of fat metabolism. Now let's talk about accumulation of dampness in the body from the modern perspective. The total accumulation always starts from accumulation of water on a cellular level. Why water gets accumulated in cells? In Kapha's the level of gross, metaboli of gross I'm sorry, metabolism is lowered. The gross metabolism is the amount of energy that our body needs to maintain basic physiological processes such as heartbeat, breathing, intestinal peristalsis and so on. The malfunction of the gross metabolism in Kapha's may also get fixated by the presence of the low T3 syndrome that we will discuss a bit later. If the person suffers from stagnation of energy, it leads to suppression of cellular metabolism, first of all, on the level of ion channels. As a result, we get an excessive amount of ions that accumulate in the cells. Osmosis gets aggravated and water starts entering the cell. The violation of gross metabolism is accompanied by the state of the insulin resistance and the extracellular swelling also starts developing. Now let's overview cardio intervalogram and uh, cardio intervalogram indicators of accumulation of dampness and phlegm. Spectrum indicators of the accumulation of damp uh, of dampness and phlegm are one might think that total power the spectrum of Kapha person should be somewhere around 8000 milliseconds squared but it would be wrong. Total power the person suffering from the syndrome of accumulation of dampness and phlegm would be around 1500 to 3000 milliseconds squared. High frequency range is about 70% of the spectrum which is quite high due to Kapha domination. Very low frequency range is in average equals 10% and low frequency in average is 15%. An average duration of the heart cycle is over 1000 milliseconds, which is one of the main features of this constitution type. As there is a deficiency of energy due to the inertia of the system in this constitution type, tension index would be around 150 conventional units. Restoration index is 6.6 .6 conventional units and inert state of the restoration mechanisms, yin-yang index below 200 conventional units, which shows tension in the channels associated with idanadi, excess of yin, and adequacy index moving towards 43, which represents low demands and inert capacity. Integral indices more of a functional index of health would never be in the green zone. In the most of the cases of Kapha Vikriti, it will be in the range of 50, 75 and more. The level of stress would be at the upper border of eutonic state of norm. As for adaptation price and the speed of biological aging indices, 
it is possible that they would be in the range of norm. Pulse characteristics. According to 10-point assessment by Veda Pulse, Kapha would be higher than 5 points, which itself is a manifestation of pathological condition. Vata and Pitta tend to 1 point, which is a suppressed state. Which uh, the, uh, those of you who use palpation diagnosis of Vasant Lad and his 3 point system would see that Kapha is around 3 points and even 3 and half points. As for characteristics of the pulse wave or gati, here we would see the features of classical hamsa gati. But aside of that, we would notice an interesting feature of gaja, gaja gati or elephant movement. Gaja gati is characterized by the cloven spikes, though the typical hamsa gati or swan pulse has entire spikes. Even in case of rare Gajagati spikes, it is a direct manifestation of development of lymphostasis. Vega or speed of the pulse would be lower than 60 beats per minute. Tala would be of the nature typical for Kapha Vikriti and elastic but low amplitude. Bala is of an average values. Domination of Kapha would be reflected in Tapamana indicator which if we try to translate literally means temperature of pulse and in its turn it reflects the state of Agni and metabolism in general. So in Kapha Vikriti we get Manda Agni. Agni represents gross metabolism and Manda means weak, but at the same time it is stable. By energy in the syndrome of accumulation of dampness and phlegm, total level is about 100% and it won't go higher. Tension is more than 10% in the organs of maximum accumulation of dampness and phlegm. In classical case of the syndrome we would see tension in avlambaka and kledaka subdoshas. Avlambaka in general rep represents the fluidal environment of the body. Kledaka represents fluidal environment on the level of digestion. We would also notice a certain tension of Ranjaka Pitta, which is connected with a certain processes on the level of liver associated with violation of fat metabolism. Another feature is low Vyana Vata, which in general reflects stagnation of key energy. And increased Prana Vata denotes violation of energy metabolism in the body, which shows that there is some pathological process in the body that needs extra energy. How can we balance the state of a person with the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome? There are certain methods of prophylaxis and methods of treatment of the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome or Kapha Vikriti. There are therapeutic diet, herbal therapy, BAP or biological active points or Marma acupressure and physiotherapy. Methods of treatment of spleen in traditional Chinese medicine. There are two types of treatment of spleen. It is repletion or boom, which is more important for our case. And the repletion would be represented by improvement of transportation function and functioning of liver in general. And as spleen doesn't like an excessive moisture, there is a method of removal or expelling of excessive wetness would be connected with drying of dampness, dissolving the phlegm and straining the, the dampness. And it is a say or removal method. Let's start discussing the general therapy and the general treatment from diet therapy. Warm, light and dry food is beneficial for people of this constitution type. They should avoid cold, heavy food, oily food, animal fats. They should also avoid sweet, as in sweet food there is a combination of soil and water elements which are cooling, having heavy and sticky. 
also they should avoid salty as it is combination of water and fire which makes it heavy warming and sticky which we don't want and also sour food which is fire plus soil it is warming heavy sticky and uh, they should also avoid tastes that increase kapha and increase damp dampness and phlegm pungent bitter and an astringent taste lower kapha they lower dampness and phlegm so we use them the person should also limit the intake of salt meaning not just a salt taste but salt in a pure form the person should also eat less not frequently not more often th than three times a day breakfast after 10 a.m lunch around 1 or 2 p.m and light supper before 6 p.m hot spices are necessary for the person therapeutic fa therapeutic fasting is also recommended approximately once in three months or one day of fasting every week which is more preferable sleeping after meals is contraindicated it is better to have a walk if you ha if you feel sleepy and to feel more energized it is better to have a short walk to avoid sleeping during the day besides it is important that uh, eating is not supposed to be a part of emotional support so avoid stress eating by all means don't let food be your emotional substitute for love and support and so on fruits increase the amount of water and cause an excessive production of mucus and i mean sweet fruits but due to the substantial portion of ether they are effective in decreasing the heaviness of kapha so we don't want to eat sweet fruits Sour fruits are, ab are able to strengthen agni, but they produce additional heaviness and as a result do not reduce the amount of fat and do not reduce the amount of mucus when they are used in a long-term diet. So we don't use sour fruits for a long time. Fruits can be recommended in case of accumulation of dampness and phlegm are pomegranate, sour apples, dry fruits, cranberry and so on. As for Chinese diet therapy, they recommend queens as it is of a sore and astringent taste and have warming energy. It removes dampness, restores collaterals, removes energy blocking caused by ama, and harmonizes the stomach. Vegetables are highly beneficial for a kapha constitution due to their light after thermal treatment i mean and dry nature which means that they have diuretic effect that we need to strain dampness and remove phlegm but it is necessary to neutralize their cool nature eat them warm steam or stew vegetables with spices but do not use oil most beneficial vegetables are celery all sorts of cabbage, legumes, vegetables that contain a lot of water would only worsen the state, the state of kapha's, except uh, for the fasting days based on consumption of cucumbers, which is done for a particular purpose, because cucumbers com contain this uh, certain acid that prevents or inhibits accumulation of fat in the body. Traditional Chinese medicine suggests to add to the ration sclerotium of a certain type of fungus poria cocos as poria has a well-expressed diuretic effect crops are not recommended to people of kapha type as they are heavy in nature only those crops are beneficial that have an expectorant and drying diuretic effect rice is contraindicated due to its glutinous nature it aggravates kapha as for quinoa or barley they have a mild diuretic effect which means that they are useful for kaphas traditional chinese medicine recommends um, 
uh, Dewey Riley, which is kind of exotic and has sweet and astringent tastes and neutral energy. It removes dampness, relieves whites, nourishes kidneys, strengthens the uh, quintessence of gin, restores the spleen. Most of legumes are beneficial for kapha, uh, drying it off by via mahaphuta. Tofu may slightly increase kapha, but anyway it is more preferable source of protein than meat. Uh, and also it is more preferable source of protein than milk products and nuts. We may use tofu, mash, beans, peeled peas. Tofu is a more preferable source of proteins than meat. But we use tofu only with hot spices, as it is of a heavy nature and may worsen the state of kapha. Chinese diet therapy f focuses its attention on the red mash, which is an ideal for this constitution type. Most of nuts and seeds are not suitable for people of kapha type. They are heavy and increase mucus and stagnation. However, as a source of protein, they are more preferable than meat or dairy. Pumpkin seeds is a perfect variant for this constitution type as they have a well-expressed antiparasitic, laxative and diuretic effect. Kapha's should avoid milk products except for non-fatty clabber and goat milk as milk increases production of mucus and causes stagnation. It is better to substitute milk food with soy products. We can recommend fresh clabber and soy milk as dairy products that safe for this constitution type. As for animal products, we may say that people of Kapha constitution do not need products of animal origin as they are not prone to tissue insufficiency. So if they need protein, it is not necessarily to get it from meat. Animal fat must be completely excluded from the ration. In case the person wants to continue eating meat, chicken and turkey meat is preferable. Traditional Chinese medicine recommends river fish, not sea fish to people of this constitution type. Chinese medicine accepts eating meat as something normal and includes it in all sorts of diet. At the same time, Ayurveda tends to recommend crops and dairy products, which uh, to my personal opinion is more beneficial for health. Oil is not suitable for kapha. Heavy and moisty oil would only worsen the state of kapha. Use oil in small quantities. Use plant oil which is preferable, and exclude animal fat, as we already discussed. We can use sunflower oil. It is an ideal variant if you mix sunflower oil and mustard oil together. All spices are beneficial, especially the pungent ones, dry and hot. Spices would stimulate gross metabolism, at the same time preventing accumulation of fat and water. Exclude salts, as salt retains water in the body. We use pepper, mustard, ginger, cardamom, turmeric, and so on. If you have some doubts about the suitability of the product for your constitution type, just add more hot spices, which would neutralize the possible unwanted influences of the product that you want to try to eat. Drink less, especially cold water and beverages with ice. Herbal tea of diuretic and dry nage effect mixed with spices such as cinnamon or ginger is preferable to drink. Tea with bergamot is highly beneficial for this constitution. It is pungent, it has warming energy, its formula is kapha vata minus pita plus, so we increasing pita and lower kapha. It moves the energy and dries dampness. One of the ancient folk Chinese recipes helping to dry dampness and remove phlegm is tea based on mandarin pill. Today where there are multiple special tea compositions based on mandarin peel as it is, it has great moving energy and um, the older the peel, the stronger effect it has. So, for this purpose, mandarin, mandarin is peeled and dried and stored for a long period of time. And this way it gets more powerful. 
the bitter nature of the pill would provide the needed drainage and diuretic effect. Another beneficial plant is Buddha's hand citron. It is pungent, bitter, sour, and warming. Its formula is also Kapha minus and Pita plus. It moves kidney energy, removes stagnation, harmonizes spleen and stomach, dries off dampness, and dissolves phlegm. One of the classical res recipes of traditional Chinese medicine is the Eight Treasures Tea, which is a perfect remedy to treat accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome. It contains dried mandarin peel, uh, one or two slices, dried ginkgo leaves, two pieces, Chinese bellflower roots, uh, two or three slices, poria cocos that we have uh, mentioned today, one or two bites, Chinese cardamom, buds of tusilago farfara, ginger root, and black tea. Herbal therapy for the syndrome of accumulation of dampness and phlegm. General characteristics of drugs that decrease kapha. Energy of such drugs or herbs is mainly warming or hot or neutral, rarely cooling. Tastes that we use are pungent, bitter and astringent. Rarely we use sweet and sour. According to traditional Chinese medicine, the root of dampness is in the spleen, meaning pancreas. Spleen and stomach are associated with the element of soil or prithvi. Spleen absorbs the energy of water from the food, from the crops, for example, turns it into nourishing key and body fluids and distributes it throughout the body. In case of functional weakness of spleen and stomach, the distribution gets violated, which causes accumulation of dampness and further production of, production of phlegm. First, it starts manifesting as digestive issues, fermentation function of pancreas and liver bile is getting violated, pathological dampness blocks uh, the distribution function of spleen, which suppresses its functions even more. The remedies that help to remove dampness and phlegm according to traditional Chinese medicine, first of all, it is aromatic plants having an intense smell, normalizing the movement of qi in the middle burner. We also need to remove dampness out of the spleen, tonify its motor function, as the presence of dampness in the middle burner causes stagnation in gastrointestinal tract, and as a result, stagnation in other systems. It is combined with medicines that move qi and strengthen spleen. Medicine by its nature may be warm and dry, so they can easily injure yin. Such plants are contraindicated in the syndrome of emptiness of yin. Long boiling is not recommended, as the aroma elements are highly volatile and evaporate fast. One of the examples is Magnolia officinalis. It has antibiotic, spasmolytic, sedative effect, it relieves dysponia, normalizes functioning of the stomach, it has bitter and pungent taste, warming energy, it moves ki, dries of dampness, removes the uh, pile-up of food, pacifies, relieves uh, asthma, uh, and we use bark of the plant in the quantity 3 to 10 grams, which is enough. The next group uh, is medicines able to remove dampness through diuresis. Uh, such medicines are used for problems with water-salt metabolism followed by edema of kidney genesis, for pulmonary diseases with abundant phlegm, diseases of, disease of dampness and wet wounds. They have sweet, unsalted taste, neutral or slightly cool energy. They are combined with drugs that strengthen kidneys and spleen. In long-term use, such medicines may injure yin and body fluids, so such medicines are usually contraindicated for emptiness of yin syndrome. In traditional Chinese medicine, classical example of a herb possessing those qualities is poria cocos, 
It is a vitamin E carrier and has a diuretic, sedative and anti-tumor effect. It has sweet and unsalted taste, neutral energy. It has affinity to meridians of heart, spleen and kidneys. It expels dampness through diuresis, strengthens the middle burner, pacifies the spirit. And we usually use sclerotium of the fungus in portion 10 to 15 grams. We also use polypores umbilatus. It has a diuretic effect, anti-tumor effect, it stabilizes vascular membranes, it has sweet and salty taste, neutral energy, it expels dampness through diuresis. We also use sclerotium of the fungus in the portion 5 to 10 grams. Another plant here is Plantago asiatico. It is a classical remedy in Western medicine used to expel dampness. It has a great drying, diuretic, expectorant, antidiarrheal, and antibacterial effect. It has a great remove. Uh, it is great in removing heat and phlegm. We use seeds of the plant in the portion five up to ten grams. Another plant is Polygonum aviculare. Its pharmaceutical effect is diuretic and antibacterial effect. Its taste is bitter. It has slightly cooling energy. Its formula is pitta kapha minus vata plus. Use the dried above ground part of the plant in the portion 10 to 15 grams. Medicines able to expel dampness and relieve cough. The medicines are divided into two groups, warm and drying and cooling, expelling dampness. The first group warms up lungs, dries off dampness, expels phlegm and dampness. The second group removes heat and expels phlegm. One of the examples is Synapsis alba. It has an expectorant and anti-inflammatory effect. It has pungent taste, warming energy. Its formula is Kapha minus Vata neutral Pita plus. It warms up lungs, removes phlegm, moves key, dissolves thickenings. Use seeds of the plant in the portion 3 up to 10 grams. Another plant is Inula Britannica. It has an antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, diuretic effects. Its tastes are bitter, pungent and salty. It is of a slightly warming energy. It dissolves phlegm, expels water, brings down key. Use flower heads of the plant in quantity 3 up to 10 grams. Now let's talk about Ayurvedic treatment of dampness of phlegm or management of kapha imbalance from the perspective of Ayurveda. Kapha dosha is cold, moist and heavy. Thus the methods of treatment would be warming, drying, relieving, and stimulating. The main taste here would be pungent, bitter and astringent. Pungent or kato is formed of fire and air so it is warm, light and dry. Bitter or tikta is formed of air and ether. It's slightly cold, it is light and dry. And astringent or kashaya taste Though it is cooling and less light due to presence of soil element, we can use this taste to help kaphas but only during a short period of time. We would use a certain group of herbs to carry out mutrala karma or diuretic therapy. Those herbs cleanse, remove jala, which lowers prithvi, which means that it decreases kapha. There are two main groups of herbal diuretics. Drying and warming herbs of pungent taste, mostly they have a sudorific effect as they rise water up, removing it in the form of sweat. They are effective in removing swellings, swellings of the upper part of the body. Uh, such herbs are ajwan, mustard, cinnamon, juniper berries, carrots, mormon tea, piper kubeba, parcel and garlic. Drying and cooling herbs with bitter and astringent tastes, they lower water, have a pure diuretic effect, lowering and accumulating effect. They are effective 
in removing swellings of lower part of the body. Such herbs are, for example, gokshara, coriander, corn silk, lemongrass, burdock, dandelion, plantain, asparagus, bearberry, fennel, horsetail, and barley. Aside of that, we can use Casa Svasahara expector in softening herbs. Stimulate the, uh, they stimulate the output of phlegm and mucus, they clean the lungs and stomach, and they are divided into two types. First type, warming and drying expector and herbs. They dissolve cold and dampness, reduce kapha and ama. They are predominantly pungent, having a strong effect um, of warming the body. They increase agni and pitta, stimulate. They have sudorific and carminative effect. As such herbs are calamus, cloves, mustard, elecampane, ginger in dry form, hyssop, cardamom, orange peel, tangerine, wild ginger, cinnamon, piper, cubeba, pipali, salvia officinalis. And another group is cooling and moistening herbs. They dissolve heat and dryness. They liquefy but do not remove kapha and ama. Uh, they are effective in respiratory diseases of vata and pitta types and pitta vata type also. The herbs are predominantly sweet and cooling, have softening effect, contain adhesive elements, soothing the mucosa. Such herbs are Althea, bamboo, elm, carrigan, the root of comfrey, salmon seal, flax seed, raw sugar, fern, venus hair, licorice root, and milk. Svedana karma or sudorific therapy. It stimulates sweating. It relieves muscle tension and joint pain, brings down fever, works toward cleansing the skin and inflammation processes. It dissolves the accumulation of surface surface fluids or uh, surface swellings, relieves the facial swelling, removes headache caused by cataract diseases and stagnation. There are two types of herbs uh, that are pointed out specifically. Warming sudorific herbs, uh, pungent and hot, they reduce kapha and vata, increase pitta, dissolve wind, cold and wetness, have stimulating, expectorant, anti-asthmatic and anti-rheumatic properties. Those herbs are basil, cloves, angelica, ginger, camphor, cardamom, azarum, cinnamon, mirica, juniper berries, thyme, uh, eucalyptus, ephedra and salvia officinalis and cooling sudorific herbs um, they have bitter taste less pungent they lower pitta and kapha increase vata improve metabolism have a diuretic effect such herbs are coriander burdock green mint peppermint stevia chamomile yarrow horsetail chrysanthemum and elderflowers Due to accumulation of dampness and phlegm in the lungs, people of this constitution type suffer from frequent bronchial pulmonary diseases. They often have constant cough in, abs in absence of colds and normal temperature of the body. There would be an output of phlegm in the morning or output of mucus in the morning or after eating. Phlegm is white viscous greenish when effect when affected by bacterial flora such caphas would suffer from constant feeling of weakness tendency to cold sore throat acute respiratory viral diseases bronchitis and so on and the simple simple remedies such as for example licorice are not effective for them they need something more strong for prophylaxis, we can use the medicinal tea of ginger and mandarin peel. We will need fresh ginger rhizome, 15 grams, and mandarin peel, 15 grams. Infuse the components in the thermos and take during the day's tea. The tea would dry the dampness, smooth the energy, liquefy and remove phlegm. Traditional Chinese medicine herbal composition, basic for this constitution, uh, is presented here. The main component of the composition is Pinelia ternata tubers, which means that the herb has a leading, uh, this herb, uh, Pinelia ternata, has a leading position in terms of action and importance in the whole composition. 
There is also mandarin peel, poria cocos, and glycerizer uralensis. Though glycerizer uralensis is not a perfect plant for capra, it is usually added to different herbal compositions as it balances the entire composition and harmonizes the action and cohesion of all the components in the tea. The composition mentioned above is quite hard to make on your own, but there are also ready to use remedies and peels and there are certain peels available in the market the peels are called air chin one you can use them as a basic herbal remedy of traditional chinese medicine Ad additionally there is a classical a ancient recipe of influencing the reflex points you can use ehf or laser for this therapy the points to be influenced are Hagu, Zhongwan, Tianshu, Shangju, Xu. In reflex therapy module, you would use the recipe generated by the program, but there is also an option of adding the points you choose yourself. The first point is Le Cui, is located on the lung channel. It is helpful for dissolution of output of phlegm. This point is considered as one of the basis points for Kapha constitution. Another point is located on the stomach channel. Feng Lun is also helpful for dissolution and removal of phlegm. It relieves stagnation in the area of the third burner, as it, it is a collateral point of the stomach channel from where the link to the spleen channel branches out. We can use this point in treatment of the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome. Western approach is focused on correction of accumul accumulation of dampness and phlegm on the level of lungs. Here you can see medicinal herbs that are classically used in the treatment of the syndrome. First goes the group of herbs that which work as immunocorrectors. The classic representatives here um, is Plantagamire. Another group combines herbs providing uh, mucociliary clearance, they prevent accumulation and stagnation of phlegm in the bronchi pulmonary, pulmonary tree. And one of the classic representatives here is the group uh, of herbs, and one of the main is anise. The next group consists of herbs providing uh, phagocytosis activation, and one of the greatest herbs here is Iceland moss, moss which is widely used by the specialist to various bronchi pulmonary compositions. There are, are also herbs which are uh, has a direct antibacterial effect, drainage effect, such as tusiloga and sage. Licorice doesn't have any direct uh, action needed for this particular syndrome, but as we already mentioned, it is often used as a mediator, as it is capable of harmonizing the entire composition. There are also herbs divided into groups according to their anti-inflammatory, anti tusic and, and detoxicating properties. Here is an example of classical herbal composition clinical herbal composition. It contains tusilga leaves, grassy part of viola tricolor, grassy part of thyme, birch buds, thyme, um, I mean fruits this time. The first time I mentioned thyme it was grassy part and now it is fruits. Grassy part of oreganum and elecampain roots. The composition may also be accompanied by the following drugs and methods of treatment. Glaucinum, corfit, inhalation with eucalyptus, mint, lavender and coriander oil, mustard baths every other day, massage for chest and back with different balms. Now it is high time to talk about the disease that may follow people suffering from accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome throughout their entire life. The disease is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis uh, is a disease of arteries of elastic and muscular elastic type characterized by the deposition of lipoproteins containing apoprotein B and cholesterol delivered by these lipoproteins with the involvement of cells, microphages, 
lymphocytes, smooth muscle cells of vessels, platelets, and cytokines with the following reactive growth of connective tissue and the formation of fibrous plaques in the arterial wall. As a result, the plague blocks the blood flow and causes stagnation. It is important to understand that atherosclerosis is not just a clustering of plagues in the vascular wall. It is an immune disorder. It, is, it was proved by the infectious theory of atherosclerosis development by Fortenham, who detected that plague is formed only on a cell that is affected by inflammatory process. The sum of the following features observed in a patient would tell you about the axis of cholesterol and development of the syndrome. First of all, it is premature aging, mismatch of appearance and actual age of a person. It will be manifesting through early graying, maybe, of the head and chest hair in men. Multiple xenthomas, yellow papules on the body, abdomen, buttock, extensor surfaces of the joint. The, presses, the presence of xanthelasmus or lipid formation on the eyelids, it is a direct sign that the body tries to remove the excess of cholesterol by all means. Frank's sign is a vertical or uh, diagonal fold or wrinkle on the earlobe, would also be a marker of this uh, pr presence of high level of cholesterol. Such a fold would reflect the increase of lipoproteins and atherosclerosis of the coronary vessels. Gabriel syndrome or ear hair growth would also be a marker and a worm syndrome. A worm syndrome is palpated in the me measurement of blood I'm sorry, the measurement of blood pressure in sclerotic artery, you would notice that artery has this warm-like craving shape. The indicators that one must pay special attention to is the level of cholesterol in the level and the level of triglycerides. Here in the table you can see the ranges of norm of lipid content in plasma of an adult. The increased level of triglycerides may be an early sign of development of the disorder. So if you see that, uh, that it, its content is above 2 millimole per liter, you understand that it is necessary to take some action. Cholesterol is a special molecule that is highly important for our body, so it would be wrong to think that its presence in our body is something unwanted. It is a plastic material, is a part of membranes of all cells ensuring their stability. Used, it is used for synthesis of bile acids and necessary for emulsifying and absorption, absorption of fats in the intestine. The synthesis of such hormones as steroid hormones and the hormones of the adrenal cortex, uh, such hormones as estrogen and androgens, is impossible without cholesterol. Besides, it is used for the synthesis of vitamin D. Cholesterol metabolism. Cholesterol is taken from food, but it also is synthesized by the body itself. And as you may see, the portion of cholesterol produced by our body is bigger than the portion that we get with food. You may also see that about 80% of cholesterol is produced by liver, and liver plays an important role in development of atherosclerosis. As for consumption of cholesterol, daily we need about 500 or 600 milligrams of cholesterol to, syn uh, to carry out synthesis of bile acids. We also need about 100 milligrams of cholesterol per day uh, for synthesis of steroid hormones. Excretion with feces is 500 milligrams per day and the removal of the shed epithelial and sebaceous gland secretion also takes about 100 milligrams of cholesterol per day. In total we get about 1,000 
and 200 up to 1,300 milligrams per day of cholesterol consumed in the body or excreted by the body. Triglyceride metabolism. Triglyceride are the ba uh, triglycerides. I'm sorry, are the basic nutrients consumed by muscles and heart. So triglycerides are nutrients or nu uh, neutral fats that are con consumed by our organs every day they come with food in quantity 60 to 80 grams triglycerides turn into free fatty acids and in a form of special transport capsules move to the tissues with the blood the transport capsule that carries this triglyceride is presented by a drop of fat covered with water-soluble membrane. This hydrophilic membrane consists of apoprotein and polar lipids providing solubility in blood plasma, thus making the fat drop able to be carried by the blood. The whole structure is of a spherical form and called lipoprotein. There are five uh, basic types of lipoproteins. Uh, first is kilomicrons um, and very low density lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins, intermediate density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins. By density is meant the portion of protein in the structure of lipoprotein. Kilomicrons are lipoproteins that happen to be a transportation form for food triglycerides. It means that they carry triglycerides that we get with food. They carry them from the intestine to the liver, skeletal muscles, myocardium and adipose tissue. Very low density lipoproteins uh, is the main transport form for triglycerides produced by liver. It interacts with the lipoprotein lipase of endothelium of hard blood vessels, skeletal muscle and adipose tissue. Low density lipoproteins uh, are the main carriers of cholesterol, cholesterol from the site of synthesis to consuming organs and tissues, uh, adrenal glands, gonads, liver and so on. Accumulation of cholesterol depends on the quantity of low-density lipoproteins in the blood. Low-density lipoproteins are synthesized in the liver. They get filled with cholesterol, attached to cells, get absorbed uh, in the blood, and then release cholesterol again. If there is an inflammation in the cell, low density lipoprotein get damaged which results formation of atherosclerotic plaque high density lipoproteins are formed in the liver and enterocytes they pass all the tissues capture three cholesterol from peripheral tissues to prevent its deposition and deliver it back to the liver for further metabolism the violation of the balance between these two systems of bringing cholesterol to tissues and capturing it back in fact is a platform of development of atherosclerosis. So we, if we get the violation of this whole system, if high density lipoproteins proteins are not functioning, uh, we get this platform for development of atherosclerosis. That is why it is not enough to check the total level of cholesterol in the blood, as you see. It is necessary to check the concentration of low-density lipoproteins in the blood, as they are atherogenic and they may, they may cause this uh, formation of atherosclerotic plaque. And also, it is important to check the concentration of high-density lipoproteins, as they are responsible for removal of cholesterol from the body, as they collect cholesterol as you remember and bring it back to liver and liver uh, carries out the further metabolism of fats. The scheme of the development of atherosclerotic plaque. 
Low-density lipoproteins get to the tissue to, to release cholesterol that they carry with them. But suddenly they meet an inflamed area in the vessel. The transportation capsules get damaged by free molecules radiated by the immune cells. And being damaged, the transportation cell cannot be consumed by the tissue. And at the same time, they contain a lot of cholesterol. The body starts sending the immune cells or macrophages to the spot. And macrophages, in their turn, start to eat the damaged transportation cells. The clustering of macrophages with uh, the transportation cells fermenting inside of it is a base of atherosclerotic plague. What measures are to be taken for prophylaxis and treatment of the disease? First of all, it is necessary to follow an anti-atherosclerotic diet. Follow the physical activity regime. Eliminate negative psycho-emotional stress situations, creating a state of psychological comfort at work, at home, and also it may be useful to to go through psychotherapy. It will be useful and even necessary to quit smoking and avoid alcohol abuse. The basic principles of diet therapy in atherosclerosis are to reduce the total intake of fats, of course, reduce the use of saturated fat immediately, animal fats, butter, cream, eggs that contribute to hyperlipidemia. Replace butter with vegetable oil in cooking. Increase the consumption of products enriched with polyunsaturated fatty acids such as liquid vegetable oils, fish, marine products as they reduce blood lipid levels. Increase fiber and complex carbohydrate, vegetables, fruits. Intake uh, should be around 35 milligrams uh, or kilos per day. Reduce consumption of cholesterol-rich foods immediately and limit the amount of salt in food. Diet number 10 by Scientific Research Institute of Nutrition of the Russian Academy of Medical Sciences it suggests limitation of fat, mainly animal fat, to 70 grams. Limitation of carbohydrates, mainly simple carbohydrates, to 350-400 grams. Limitation of table salt to 3 or 5 grams. Enrichment with polysaturated fatty acids. Enrichment with dietary fibers and lipotropic substances. Cholesterol content limitation and energy value of the diet should be around 2,400 up to 2,500 kilocalories per day. Limitation of cholesterol content is necessary in the course of treatment. The daily dose should not exceed 200 uh, or 300 milligrams per day and at a strict diet it should not go over 1 150 milligrams. Exclude or limit cholesterol rich products such as meat, uh, meat byproducts, liver, kidney, brain, egg yolk. Um, it is enough to intake one egg yolk to cover the daily dose of cholesterol. Can you imagine how much of co cholesterol is contained in one egg yolk? Also limit butter, pork and lamb fat, fatty meat and so on. It is also necessary to count the amount of cholesterol consumed per day. It turns out that sea fish is extremely useful in prevention and treatment of atherosclerosis. Sea fish contains omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. It reduces the content of cholesterol, cholesterol transportation cells, very low density lipoprotein and low density lipoprotein and increases the number of high density lipoprotein in the blood and you remember that high density lipoprotein is responsible for carrying free cholesterol cells or fat cells to liver uh, for further metabolism. Pay attention to the fact that you need the fish oil 
uh, and the fish oil is supposed to be produced from the carcasses of fish and not fish liver so we need fish oil and not fish liver oil another useful medicine is fatty acid sequestrant it is an any an exchange raisins that bind fatty acids in the intestine forming irreversible complexes with them or compounds uh, irreversible compounds that would be more correct to say this makes it difficult for them to get reabsorbed and their output from the body increases as a result of enterohepatic recirculation quite a small amount of fatty acids return to the liver and there appears a need to synthesize them from the cholesterol you see so uh, we need fatty acids and we synthesize them from cholesterol thus uh, reducing the amount of cholesterol and all this due to this fatty acids sequestrant medicines sequestrant reduce the level of cholesterol in the blood by 23 percent they are contained in such medicines as uh, cholesteramine and cholesterol. You can see them written in the slide. There are also drugs that inhibit the absorption of cholesterol in the intestine. In Ayurveda there is an excellent drug called Gokshura which is known for its antidiuretic uh, effect. I'm sorry, diuretic effect. And there is a medicine Tribus Panimnum based on Gokshura or Tribulus Terrestris and also polisponin both of the medicines contain steroid saponins that inhibit the absorption of cholesterol in the intestine there is also nicotinic acid or niacin it is also beneficial as it reduces the formation of very low density lipoproteins in the liver by 40 percent and this is a lot it reduces triglycerides level in the blood as well it reduces the formation of low density lipoproteins and cholesterol, activates the system of dissolving the coronary thrombus, increases the level of high density lipoproteins by 10 and even up to 30%, which is a lot, reduces the risk of repeated myocardial infarction. In 40% of patients, it contributes to the regression of cor coronary artery disease. Statins directly inhibit synthesis of cholesterol in the liver, so we need statins badly. Statins increase the level of receptors of uh, hepatocyte-detecting low-density lipoproteins and very low-density lipoproteins, which leads to their withdrawal from the blood and decrease of the level of cholesterol. Statins are contained in medicines such as, for example, um, lovastatin or mevacor and zocor. Not many people know that such medicines are basing on a fungus, Aspergillus tereus, which itself is a natural source of statin, statins needed for lowering cholesterol, as it has a direct influence on enzyme that is responsible for synthesis synthesis of cholesterol in our body there are also various folk recipes here you can see a lot of uh, here you can see those recipes uh, and they are based on onion garlic various infusions such as for example ali chip which is an alcohol extract of onion those remedies are successfully used to lower cholesterol and here is a classical medicinal herbal composition recommended to people suffering from atherosclerosis. And here you can see that this clinical herbal composition contains critigus, equisitum arviense, tussilaga, leonorus, and other herbs, uh, which you know, the herbs have diuretic, anti-inflammatory, uh, neurotrophic effect and in general the composition has proven its efficiency in treatment of atherosclerosis now it is time to discuss another dangerous disorder accompanying the accumulation of dampness and phlegm syndrome and it is obesity obesity is an excessive fat accumulation in the body leading to an increase of body weight by more than 20 percent compared to the average values World Health Organization recommends to use Quetle 
index or the body mass index, the ratio of the body weight in kilos to growth in uh, um, to to I'm sorry to height in meters squared. If you enter the uh, statistics tab in the Vedapulse program, you'd see body mass index among other indices in the heading. There you, will f there you will find the brief notification on the presence or absence of obesity in the patient. The normal range for this I index is 20-25. If it is higher in the program, it indicates overweight. If it is less than, uh, less than 20, then the body mass is insufficient. According to World Health Organization, obesity plays a huge role in pathogenesis of various disorders in the population, and it is even bigger than the influence of you know, contagious diseases. In Russia, every second person suffers from excessive body mass, and in USA, the situation is even worse. In China, for example, it is only 15%, and in, in most of the cases, obesity in Chinese people is associated with the endocrine system malfunction and not with overeating. So, what, why uh, that much of attention is paid to obesity? To what disorders it is connected? Obesity causes the disorders of cardiovascular system, endocrine system disorders connected with diabetes mellitus. Very often, people with obesity suffer from sleep uh, apnea. When the person stops breathing during the sleep and, and dies of hypoxia, the people also have a moderate risk of hypertension development. It, had, it has also been scientifically proven that there is a risk of development of breast cancer, rectal cancer, and other problems due to increased body mass. As you remember, there are two types of obesity, uh, the apple form of obesity or abdominal type, which uh, causes a high risk of ischemic heart disease and hypertension. And there is such a threat, uh, I'm sorry, and there is no such a threat in a pear type uh, or uh, gynate type of obesity when fat deposited in buttocks and thighs. Here you can see the parameters of correlation of breadth of body and thighs in women and in men. And check if you have a risk of abdominal obesity or not. In women it should be under 0 0.8 and in men under 0 0.9 measured in centimeters. The structure of fat tissue can be different. Hyperplastic type of obesity is followed by increase of uh, number of fat cells and hypertrophic type of obesity is followed by the growth of size of fat cells. It is, you should remember that it is always easier to prevent obesity than to treat it. With a decrease in the body weight in patients with severe obesity, there is no reverse reduction in the number of adipocytes, which forms a tendency to re-obesity, which means that person gains weight easily. So it is easier to prevent obesity than to treat it. The number of adipocytes is late in the childhood. Uh, it starts from the last trimester of pregnancy and in the first year of life, which means that the initial overfeeding contributes to obesity so you need to pay attention uh, to nutrition of a baby starting the pregnancy and the first year of, of the life of the, of the baby. There is a theory that claims that obesity starts developing when there is a conflict between excitability of appetite and satiety centers. Such a conflict may be caused by physical or mental injuries, for example, neuroinfections and other causes. In 1989, Kreslavsky, in his work, described 11 types of food behavior associated, uh, associated is, I'm sorry, associating eating disorders with psychosomatic neurosis. 
The common features of obese patients are feeling of being maltreated, apathy, despair, escape to loneliness, feeling of being um, imperfect, vulnerable, inefficient, and they try to comfort themselves with food because of the lack of self-love. So, unresolved personal prob problems lead to constant stress eating. Food is very often a way of protection from negative effects, especially from negative emotions. Food provides psychological element of pacification of the nervous system. It's, it heals souls of wo uh, wounds of soul. Food helps in lack of protection, love, recognition, a kind of hunger for these emotions. It leads to replacement uh, with the excessive consumption of food up to gluttony. That is why very often, if you want to help someone with obesity, you first of all need to first of all need to be a psychiatrist and help the person on the level of emotions and psychic, and and his um, psycho state. Low T3 syndrome is one of the uh, states that causes regaining of weight in the people with obesity and inhibiting the progression of losing weight when they're trying to lose weight using the diet, for example, or therapeutic, therapeutic uh, nutrition. The main uh, exchange that uh, which depends on uh, thermal regulation processes changes when person tries to lose weight. Low calorie diet lowers the level of basic metabolism and this reduces energy consumption in the body. When the person of slight overweight comes back to a normal diet after a low calorie diet, his body would adjust and metabolism would be back to norm, so there would be no regaining of weight. But for the person of this constitution type it is different. The liver would turn active uh, theranin 4 to theranin 3 which is physiologically inactive and basic metabolism would stay low and the person would get uh, would gain weight even if uh, he follows a high hypocalorie calorie diet and later we would see one of the uh, examples one of the recipes that would help to prevent this development of, of low T3 syndrome and also I recommend you to tonify young and nu uh, nurture or cherish the liver because liver is one of the, uh, is the main reasons of developing of this syndrome. Another challenge of uh, people of this type is hyperinsulinism and insulin resistance. Obesity causes insulin, insulin resistance of tissues, which in its turn increases level of insulin production. And insulin helps to store fat in fat depots. Also, insulin causes uh, hyperglycemia that increases appetite and promotes overeating. So, you see, the more insulin the person has in, in, in his body, the more uh, it, he increases appetite and the more he eats and uh, the more you know, very low density lipoproteins is produced in the body and here we get also a threat of development of atherosclerosis. The main principles of treatment here uh, would be to use clinical diet for this cons particular constitution type all the other means, including, including physical exercises, massage, surgical invasion, physiotherapy, all these are secondary in comparison to clinical diet, the therapeutic diet, which always goes first, change uh, the habits of eating. The basic principles of treatment of primary obesity are to follow diet number eight the reduced variant. There are 
uh, several types of diet number eight. There are basic type, reduced varia uh, variant, and uh, reduced to maximum, when we reduce uh, the consumption of cholesterol to maximum. So here the reduced uh, variant is recommended, uh, and we need to limit the intake of har carbohydrates and fats as well. Uh, we need to learn how to gain feeling of uh, satiety with low calorie but large in volume food such as for example raw vegetables. So we'll be eating food that is more in value in volume but less in calories um, contain. It is also would be better to um, have multiple meals in small portions five six times a day restrict the intake of salt up to five grams per day and restrict the consumption of liquids up to one and a um, liter and a half per day also it is recommended to consume coarse fibered cellulose daily and use zigzag way of eating. What uh, zigzag way of eating means we'll discuss a bit later. Determination of daily energy value, value of ration. So you start a diet and now it is important to understand uh, how much of energy should be contained in your daily ration so you wouldn't gain weight or uh, so you would lose weight. And the main mistake here is to think that if you stop eating at all, you would lose weight quickly. First of all, uh, stop uh, fasting, total fasting and stop eating at all would provoke many latent chronic problems such as, for example, change in blood pH, violation of the process of excitation, uh, excitation and inhibition in the body, heart problems, gout, anemia, loss of ability to work, as uh, asthenia, vitamin deficiencies, violation of metabolism, immune deficiency, uh, which is one of the biggest problems when you stop eating, and so on. That is why we may say that restriction of nutrition is a special kind of art which requires a certain knowledge. And the first method of calculation of da daily energy value of the ration for you or for your patient is to calculate the basal energy balance, BEB, -E the daily amount of energy required to maintain basic metabolism, basic processes in the body. Just quite easy to calculate your energy, energy value. First of all, you will need to know your body mass index and match it to uh, other indicators according to the table. For example, for normal body complexion, uh, body mass index equals 20-25 points, as you see in the table. Uh, fat portion in the body is 20-25%, and volume of energy burned daily is 20 kilo calories per, per kilo. So you multiply your body weight by this 20 uh, and get the number of 1400 kilocalories which is the amount of energy that your body needs to maintain the basic life processes. It means that in the uh, state of rest without any physical activity just to maintain basic physical uh, processes in the body, your body needs 1400 kilocalories per day. But usually it is not enough uh, and we need to carry out a cal calculation of the daily energy uh, value of the diet depending on daily physical activity performed by a person. As the previous calculation uh, is made for the state of complete physical inactivity. In other words, your body would consume 1,400 kilocalories per day in a state of complete rest, just when you're lying on a couch. And there are five groups of work uh, according to the level of physical exertion. For example, a therapist or a doctor considered a profession with a low physical exertion. But anyway, it means that we need 2 plus 
to the basic 1,400 kilocalories consumed by a therapist in a state of rest, another uh, one-sixth of this number, because we need to take to consideration physical activity during a day. As a result, we get 1,600 kilocalories, and this is an energy consumed by a therapist during a day. Having this basic number, now we can start a calorie correction of the diet regarding the situation of the particular person. So, first of all, we need to carry out individual calculations according to a particular person's needs and physical activity and uh, personal weight of the person. There is also an alternative way of getting a bas this basic number to start cor correcting the, the diet. It is a determination of the ideal body mass. The easiest way uh, is to calculate a Breitman index. We multiply our height in centimeters by 0 0.7 and subtracting 50. And we get this uh, number. Broca's index is pretty rough and it's pretty approximate as we take our height in centimeters, subtract uh, 100 and get this approximate number for an ideal weight. The optimal way here is to use the modified Broca's index that was derived by Fiedler in 1991, One. where for men uh, we take for men we take height, uh, I'm sorry, height in centimeters, um, subtracting 100 and subtracting 10% of the sum. And for women, we take height in centimeters, subtracting 100 and subtracting another 15% of the sum. So we get this uh, ideal body mass and basing on it we can correct the diet. Knowing the ideal body mass, we can calculate the energy value of the diet, considering also a character of work. Thus, we would know the number of kilocalories needed per day for ideal body mass. For example, in height 170 centimeters, ideal body mass is uh, 69 kilograms. And if the person is of a second prof professional group, the group with a low level of physical exertion, the amount of energy needed per day is 1,725 kilocalories per day. And then, uh, after that, we need to calculate the number by which we would reduce the energy consumption. For this use, uh, we take body mass index to find out the stage of obesity of the person first. So, we lower the energy value of the diet by 400 kilocalories for obesity of stage 1. We lower the energy value of the diet by 600 kilocalories for obesity stage 2. And we lower the energy uh, consumption uh, of the diet by 8 kilocalories for obesity stage 3. After we got all the needed numbers, find, uh, found out body mass in this, find out the stage of obesity, find out the ideal body mass of the person and the number of calories recommended to be taken per day for this particular person and, and we can start finally generating a diet and eating regime only after making all these calculations. I present you a low calorie diet number 8, a reduced variant, which was, in, which was assigned by Health Ministry of Russian Federation to patients with obesity. There is a basic diet uh, also where the number of calories is close to norm. The reduced and reduced by maximum diet where the number of calories is noticeably restricted. It is important to follow the basic principle, principles of the diet. First of all, 
it is a moderate limitation of the energy value to 1300 up to 1600 calories by limiting fats and carbohydrates one also needs to exclude simple sugars, limit animal fats, stable salt, include vegetable fats, uh, dietary fibers uh, contained in raw vegetables, fruits, dietary fibers. The food is boiled or steamed without salt, so frying is uh, forbidden. Free liquids such as, for example, tea and juice uh, is, are limited to 0 0.8 or 1.5 liters per day. Eating regime, um, intake of food is 4-6 times a day. The diet lasts for several months, not less than several months. The greatest decrease in body weight is observed in the first month, month due to water loss. It is also important that uh, the body weight loss should not exceed 1 or 2 kilos per week in women and 2 uh, 2.5 kilos per week in men. When finishing the diet, do not return to the same caloric immediately. Increase it gradually over several months, otherwise you'd get a rapid gaining of weight due to low basic meta metabolism. The zigzag pat eating pattern that we mentioned a couple of minutes ago is presented by fasting days based on eating of different types of products, such as fasting days um, such fasting days eating zigzags uh, would substitute the total fasting and to my personal opinion total fasting is not preferable as food intake is also a source of positive emotions which is extremely important in situation like this so we prefer uh, fasting days based on different types of products instead of total fasting and uh, the first type of fasting days uh, is fasting days based on carbohydrates and carbohydrates in the form of vegetable fiber um, and uh, also we take vitamins, little protein, no fat at all. We can um, use apple day uh, or cucumber day when we take two kilos of cucumbers uh, five times during a day and you remember that cucumber contains uh, teratonic acids that prevent turning of carbohydrates into fats and also we can use raw vegetables or compote it is also recommended fasting days based on fats uh, we use milk fats which also inhibit transformation of carbohydrates into fats decrease the level of insulin and stimulate uh, lipolysis. Milk uh, also reduce uh, hyperinsulinism, stimulate lipolysis as I already said and we can use sour cream uh, or cream but there are contraindications such as cholecystitis, hepatitis, atherosclerosis and chronic colitis. Fasting days based on proteins Proteins enhance, enhance the specific dynamic effect of food uh, or moving effect of food, provide high saturation, do not cause uh, hyperinsulinism, promote the mobilization of fat from the depots, use kefir, curd, yogurt, tofu, meat, fish, uh, it can be curd day or curdled milk and kefir day. Tofu days for vegetarians or low-fat meat days for meat eaters and so on. Ideally, in case of a long-term diet, the person should consider a combined type of diet. So, uh, such as uh, rice and apples day or curd and curdled milk days. We do, uh, we do it to make the diet more diverse. So the person wouldn't feel depressed and wouldn't feel too much of a pressure. As for the total fasting, as anyway you decided to go through total fasting, uh, the situation should be under control. 
It is better to follow total fasting in the stationery, so you would be under control of the doctor. It should be a short-term, mild course of two or three days, with an average body weight reduction by uh, 1.2 kilos a day. And uh, dry fasting is contraindicated. It means that the intake of liquids is necessary. As for pharmacological treatment, uh, people prefer to take appetite reducers um, or appetite suppressors, which to my personal opinion is not the best option, as it has multiple unwanted consequences, such as, for example, psycho-emotional imbalance and so on. On the other hand, preparations stimulating lipolysis are necessary in low-calorie diets. The best option here is uh, bromeline. It is a pineapple enzyme in capsules. It is uh, responsible for reduction and correction of the figure while maintaining the usual lifestyle. So uh, the person would lose weight without, fast, uh, without fasting or without increasing physical activity. Another useful preparation here is Tibetan drug Guo. It is a combination of herbs that inhibit fat formation and promotes their dissolution. In obesity, there is also a tendency to water retention in the extravascular space without edema. And we, so we use uh, natural diuretics um, to expel water from inter, uh, intercellular matrix and, and, uh, and um, adipocyte fat. It, diuretics usually have this positive psychological effect on a, pers on a patient, uh, instilling confidence in a person, so the person loses weight, loses water, and sees the result and continues doing what he's doing. And the herbal preparations are preferable. Buds and birch leaves, uh, parsley leaves, cornflower leaves. We also use kidney tea and different diuretic collections. The diuretics are especially effective for hypertension and chronic heart failure. The regime of physical activity is extremely important uh, and therapeutic ex exercise should be applied by a person to lose weight in this uh, state. So we recommend daily walk for 30 minutes, physical training uh, five times a week for hour, hour and a half. The most effective way to reduce body weight uh, in the morning is uh, exercising before breakfast and also it, is, it would be great if the person would use different fitness equipment uh, with calorie counters and uh, to check that he'll, he works out 300 up to 500 kilocalories every day. It is not that easy to lose fat uh, and fat portion of the body, so to lose uh, about half of the kilo of fat, to burn half of the kilo of fat, we need to walk distance of 232 kilometers at a speed of 3.2 kilometers per hour or walk a distance of 107 kilometers at a speed of 5.5 kilometers per hour, or run, run 69 kilometers, or ride a horse, or dance foxtrot, or play the piano vigorously for 30 hours. So it means that if you eat about 100 of grams of cheese, which would provide to your body uh, about 360 calories, you would need to walk for more than an hour at a speed of 5 kilometers per hour to burn this fat. One of the most, most important things that you can uh, convince the person that changing the eat eating habits is one of the most important things in treatment of obesity. So beside physical activity, beside massage and other treatments, first of all, first of all the person should change the eating habits. Um, the, it, it is uh, preferable that patients should keep a food diary uh, and there in this food diary the person puts the place and time of meals, the set of dishes, dishes the amount of portions, 
why he ate because of hunger or uh, for the company or he ate because of stress and so on. So thus, it would be much easier to control his eating habits. The main directions of herbal therapy in obesity uh, is presented here in a slide and you can see that one of the most important things is to uh, provide herbs that are responsible for sorption of fatty acids and triglycerides and such herbs the main representatives here are laminaria, plantago, polygonum, elecampane and also we need to provide uh, the work of immune system and we use radiola, eucalyptus, coriandrum and also it is important to inhibit cholesterol absorption and we use aralia, alnus, chamomilla, alium satium which is garlic and, and uh, here you can see the Latin names of the herbs so it would be easier to find them because the Latin names are the common for all the world and uh, also it is important to stabilize the bile outflow and we use hypericum, bulparium and also stigmas of corn which is uh, also one of the most effective remedies uh, herbs and here you also see an example of clinical herbal composition it contains betula leaves, taraxum, uh, plantago, viola tricolor, frangula and the way of taking this clinical herbal composition that you may use for your patient. And we also have the general Ayurvedic principles of treatment of obesity in Kapha type. And as you remember, we were talking about 3T sy syndrome. Uh, it is surprising, but Ayurvedic Vaidyas thousands of years ago uh, managed to find a recipe to fight this low uh, T3 syndrome and they said that the problem lays in a gross metabolism so first of all to avoid developing of low T3 syndrome you need to improve or aggravate the power of your gross metabolism and there are certain recipes and spices and uh, remedies in Ayurveda to increase the power of gross metabolism and the, the spices that we use red and black pepper, ginger, garlic, turmeric and uh, we use substances that stimulate lipolysis such as katuka, barberry, gentian, myrrh and soft laxatives as triphala, aloe juice and so on you can see here also other re remedies that are uh, beneficial for this uh, constitution type. One of the most effective um, herbs here is Berberis vulgaris. And here we're talking about roots, leaves and bark. We're not talking about fruits, because fruits can only increase kapha. So we are avoiding the, uh, them for this constitution type. So we use berber Berberis vulgaris as it is of a bitter astringent taste and hot energy. Its formula is kapha pitta minus. Kapha minus. This is the very thing that we need. And vata neutral. And also its prabhava special action. It rejuvenates. Uh, it cleanses from ama. And here is the very Ayurvedic composition that we should use to enhance the total metabolism. Dry ginger, black pepper, pipoli, coriander, nutmeg, ajwan, clove. We mix all the components in equal parts with honey and take it in one up to four grams three times per day to improve the digestion. We take it in violation of fat metabolism. You remember the situation when the person is trying to lose weight and during the first mo month the person sees the result. He's losing the weight but then it suddenly stops because of the this low T3 syndrome. To avoid this situation we start taking uh, dry ginger, black pepper, pipoli, coriander, nutmeg, ajwan. Use this recipe to enhance the general metabolism. 
And here you can see another uh, video composition for losing weight. Uh, Haritake two parts, Amlaki two parts, Bibhitake two parts, Katuka two parts, Dry Ginger, Brahmi and Honey. It improves metabolism, has a mild laxative effect. It is recommended for obesity, it is good for balancing kapha. And we take it in, in a portion 1 to 4 grams before meals. And I also want to present you the reflex therapy module as it may be uh, of a great use in treatment of this um, very syndrome. If you do not use needles and you want to use this um, and you use the apparatus methods of influence, you can use the physiotherapy module but uh, EHF module in particular. Also the physiotherapy module and quantum therapy section would be greatly helpful to help people with Kapha constitution, especially people suffering from atherosclerosis and uh, atherosclerosis of vessels of lower limbs with alternating limping as we already discussed, and you know it, that in China uh, obesity is a rare disorder. So, in, even in classic Chinese texts of traditional Chinese medicine, they do not have direct uh, recommendations uh, of auricular therapy for treatment of obesity. So, we may use the recommendations of Western specialists who have a certain uh, special substantial knowledge on traditional Chinese medicine and auricular therapy uh, in particular and according to those uh, Western sources we can use zones 22, 84, 17, 18 and uh, 34 and additionally zones 1 and 13. As you know there are certain reflex zones in the sole or the reflex zones on the feet that we may use to uh, influence different organs responsible for um, production of cholesterol, consumption of cholesterol, work of a thyroid gland and uh, production of triglycerides and so on. So you make this, uh, you get generated recommendations from the program and you print them and you give certain recommendations to your patient uh, because he or she can carry the food massage at home and the conclusion for prevention and treatment of accumulation of dampness and phlegm one should use first of all diet for kapha constitution certain diet for this particular constitution type with limitation of animal fats and all the things that we have discussed today. We also use herbal compositions and those herbal com compositions should be of a mild diuretic effect, it should be choleratics inhibiting the absorption of cholesterol. We also influencing biological active points or marmas and as for Chinese biological active points there are Hagu, Zhongwan, Tanshu, Fenglun and so on. You can see them on this slide. Also we take care for correction of the low T3 syndrome and you remember the Ayurvedic recipe that I have mentioned today. Also we use acupressure, uh, we use feet massage, uh, and especially pay special attention to thyroid gland, pancreatic gland and adrenals and these zones on the feet. Also we use EHF and physiotherapy um, and auricular therapy for zones 22, 84, 17, 18 and 34. Here you can see our contacts. If you have any questions please contact us. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.